Not me waking up with a sore throat. So I saw that Ariel Bissett recently did her 2021 rendition of the end of year book tag, a tag that she created, and I really enjoyed that video and it reminded me that I wanted to do this tag again. This is a tag where you basically reflect on what you're currently reading and, and what you want to read before the end of the year. It's really meant, I feel like it's really meant for those of us who try to read as much as we can but don't really read that much. Uh, and I appreciate that, I appreciate that. So let's just get straight into the questions. First question is, are there any books that you started this year that you still need to finish? There are quite a few that I started a while ago that I'm still in the middle of. But the one that I think I'll talk about is New York 2140 by Kim Stanley Robinson. So this is a science fiction and climate fiction novel set in a futuristic New York uh, in 2140, the year 2140, where because of the rise in sea levels, New York has now become semi-submerged into somewhat of a pseudo venice but the book is not super duper focused alone on that reality its central focus has to do with the main conflict which connects all of the characters in the book all of whom live within the same building um, an event basically affects their lives so even though they're quite different and they don't really know each other their stories just sort of tie together because of this one thing that happens. I like that it's not a super duper sad climate fiction, like it's, it's it's meant to be a little bit more positive, like you know, yeah the world is going to shit but you know, uh, humans, you know, we'll make it work, we'll adapt. <laughs> so I like that aspect of this story and I also think that it's really well written, it's very interesting, I'm extremely immersed in this world. I'm only about uh, 120 pages in, which sounds like a lot but this book is like 600 pages long, I swear to god I could use this as a coffee table if I wanted to. The next question is do you have any autumnal books to try transition into the end of the year. Because I live in the tropics, I think I'm going to switch this on its head and instead go with a tropical book. And I'm also going to go with something close to home, so that would be Where the Rhythm Takes You by Sarah Das. This is a young adult novel by a Tobagonian author. Set in Tobago is actually sent to me by the author in exchange for an honest review. It's essentially about this girl named Marina whose family owns a small scale resort and this guy who she grew up with in Tobago that left a long time ago and became somewhat of a famous musician comes back home and ends up becoming, I guess, sort of romantically involved with her or maybe it's some sort of like second chance romance situation. If the premise of this sounds somewhat familiar that's because it's supposed to be based on Persuasion by Jane Austen. I'm not exactly sure what what exactly it's supposed to be drawing from because I have not read Persuasion but y'all read that book right? Next up is there a new release that you're still waiting for? Yes um, it actually came out already so it came out earlier this week but books usually take a little bit longer to get to me because of where I am and that would be the book of form and emptiness by Ruth Ozaki. I am super duper stoked for this book. I am so excited. If you know anything about me, you know that A Tale for the Time Being is my favorite book of all time. So I'm really, really looking forward to Ruth Ozaki's new book. From what I understand, it's about a young boy named Benny O oh, whose father dies very tragically and suddenly in a car accident. And after that, he begins to hear the objects around him speaking to him. Some of them are like speaking full on sentences and the others are, I, I don't know, I guess he just picks up on a vibe. And so I guess the book is about that, but it's about so many other things. I, I know that it's supposed to be steeped in philosophy and thought experiments rooted in Buddhism, which if, you, if you're familiar with Ozaki's work, that should be no surprise, right? The next question is, what are three books that you want to read before the end of the year? For this one, I'm going to be a little patriotic and go with three more books that are set here in Trinidad and Tobago. The first one is a bit of a classic, and that is The Jumbie Bird by Ismith Khan. This takes place in the 1960s, and it is predominantly following an Indo-Trinidadian Muslim community and it's supposed to be referencing the Jambi bird which is like an owl where if you see it at a certain point in the daylight then it's like an omen for death or something like that. I'm very intrigued to read this. I, I've been wanting to read more books that sort of center the Caribbean Muslim experience for my own personal benefit of course but also because if, if you're familiar with me you'd know that that is what I am studying for my master's thesis and I'm considering maybe possibly to be determined uh, doing a little literary analysis. So I'm just kind of scoping out what's out there in terms of the Caribbean Muslim and specifically Indo-Caribbean Muslim literary tradition. I also want to read Tide Running before the end of the year by Unia Kempadu. Kempadu from what I understand is a Guyanese author who grew up in Britain but she has lived in Tobago for some time and this book takes place in Tobago. So it's about two boys who are living in Tobago and one day I guess they befriend these two 
foreigners. I don't know if they're visitors or tourists, but they become friends with this couple. And then one day something goes missing and I believe the couple accuses one of the boys. And it's about the conflict that arises from that. Again, I'm just really excited to read more books set in Tobago because I have not read anything <laughs> set in Tobago. I've read a ton of books set in Trinidad, but I haven't really read anything set in Tobago. So I'm looking forward to getting into this one. And then the third one is of course set in Trinidad. This is called Pleasant View by Celeste Mohammed. It came out this year and tons of people on Caribbean Bookstagram have been raving about how good this book is. It is a novel told in stories. I don't quite know what that means, but from the back summary, it seems like there's a ton of different characters and they're all very controversial and very scandalous. Lots of, you know, juicy things are going on in their lives. And I guess it's about how their lives interconnect within this fictional town of Pleasant View, you know, at the intersection of this election that happens. The back of the book doesn't get more specific than that, so I'm just going to go with it and enjoy whatever this author has to offer. Second and last question, is there any book that you think could still shock you and become your favorite book of the year? My favorite books of the year so far would definitely have to be The Anthropocene Reviewed and The Seven Husbands of Evelyn Hugo, but those will be easily bumped off by The Book of Form and Emptiness by Ruth Ozeki. I just I'm like 90% sure. But it wouldn't exactly be shocking, right, if, if that becomes my favorite book of the year. So there are two other books that I am thinking about reading before the end of the year. I'm not actually sure if I'll actually get around to these because they're a little bit thicker and they might require a little bit more attention, which I have little of. So I'm not making any promises or commitments here. The other books I talked about, yeah, but these, not so much. If I do, however, manage to read them, I think because they have some of the qualities that I tend to enjoy in books a lot, they could potentially also become my favorite books of the year. The first one is Mornings in Jannin by Susan Abul Hawa, and this takes place in Palestine. It's a multi-generational family story, and that's pretty much everything I know about this book, and that is all I need to know because I absolutely adore multi-generational stories. I just love the way that they explore the importance of history to both individual and family life. It's just so magical the way that multi-generational stories are told. In the vein of things like Pachinko and Homegoing and You Bring the Distant Near, I absolutely love them. So I just, I just know that if I read this one, it's going to become a favorite, based on what I've heard about it too. I also have this Nojel by A.O. and Ivy, and as you could tell by my love for Ruth Ozeki's books, I, I do have that appreciation for like, you know, magical realism, surrealism and stuff. And this one takes place in 1920s Alaska. It centers around this childless couple who cannot conceive and who really, really wants to have a child. One day they go outside and they build a snow child, like a child out of snow, like a little snowman or something, and they go back inside. They wake up the next morning, they go out into the yard, and the snow child is no longer there, but a real child appears in the forest and they don't know who the child is the child doesn't really seem to know where she came from and so i guess the question is did they create that child out of snow and based on that premise alone and the fact that it was nominated for the pulitzer prize it could potentially become my favorite book of the year. And then the final question is, have you started making any reading plans for 2022? And honestly, no, I have not started making any reading plans. The only plan that I have really, the only solid plan that I have is that I need to stop buying books. I was really good about that at the beginning of this year and the ending of last year. I went on a little bit of a book buying ban and I was reading all of the books on my physical TBR and it was great. And then like something happened in May, I just started back buying books. And now I have more books on my TBR that I know what to do with. So I wanna actually spend like uh, the majority of next year focusing on what I have on my physical TBR and avoid buying books and I might have to put some extreme measures in place I might have to limit my booktube watching and my bookstagram scrolling just so that I could avoid being bombarded with new titles that tempt me and so that I could focus on the books that are on my TBR. Also Ariel Bissette in her video made a really good point about making sure to read your hard covers when you buy them, like read them within a month of buying them, otherwise they're gonna sit down on your shelves for a year and then the paperback will come out and it's like you wasted money because you could have just waited for the paperback which is cheaper and that actually made a lot of sense to me and it was not something that ever occurred to me before so thanks Ariel. And that brings me to the end of this video. <laughs> so before I go, I'd like to tag a couple of people because I feel like, you know, sometimes when we do book tags on BookTube, we kind of forget that, you know, the original purpose of them is to like tag other people. So I'm gonna tag Dana Days, Yasmin be reading, my BookTube BFF, Kathy Tratat, and Xander from This Cubed. So I tag all of y'all, do this if you want to. Thank you all so much for watching this video. If you have any thoughts on any of the books that I mentioned, please let me know in the comments down below. I hope you have a wonderful day and until next time, inshallah, keep reading.